All right, hello. I'm back for uh, Top Step Trading. We're on Top Step Trading. We're on the NASDAQ. Profit target is uh, $3,600 today, so the profit target is $157,954. NASDAQ is currently on a two tick, three tick spread. Opened up with a new day opening gap here you can see it new day opening gap right there and that's probably a short idea if we get back up there one tick spread that's a lot or one point spread sorry four tick spread one one point green box is new day opening gap formed right on resettlement so there were sell orders in the marketplace And I'm going to try trading without the flashing lights on the right and literally just trade the chart. As you know, I don't believe in indicators. I use boxes. I use boxes. I'm a box trader. Box trader. Uh, probably just keep this video, try and keep it below two hours. Okay, trading down into. We're on the NASDAQ. Trading down into just these lows right here. Probably wants to come and take down. We're on electronic trading hours, as uh, you know, we're we're on electronic session now. We're in the Globex session. We don't expect a lot of volatility, so going to be slow. We're on a one-minute Nasdaq chart. Probably going to try and keep this recording to one hour or less. Uh, if you're wondering what I'm doing here. Uh, I am training, okay, talking out loud, because here's the thing, if I don't make these training videos, then I get undisciplined, and, you know, I don't want to show y'all losses, I don't have to. Okay, new day opening gap is right there. If we get back up into that, explore that, could come up into it and reject. So I'm a box trader, I trade on boxes. Okay, long wick inefficiency here. Immediate reaction off that. Long wick inefficiency here. An immediate reaction off that. So, these new day opening gaps are often, um, from what I've seen, when you get them, when you get them happen, they are immediately like resistance. So, I'm, I'm favoring the short side right now. So, I make these videos so that uh, I have something to do, um, and so that uh, I can watch them back, watch my own training. I like to think of it as though if, if I work, if I were working for a company, what would my employer want to see? Well, my employer would want to see me trading, right? So, that's what I'm trying to simulate with this. I of course don't have an employer. But uh, were I to have an employer, I think I think they'd want to see this. I think training sessions. All right, so lay of the land. The lay of the land. Coming into a holiday weekend, coming into what is probably going to be a period of decreased volatility. That is what I would expect. So what does decreased volatility mean on the chart? We're expecting a lot of ranging. The NASDAQ does like to get into its liquidity pools and sweep them. Uh, do I only trade the NASDAQ? No, but I it does tend to give you the most movement and as a day trader you need volatility you need movement you need swings kinda of why Bitcoin sucks it doesn't swing very much kinda of just sits there for a long time and then makes one move 
Go look at your Bitcoin chart. You'll see what I'm talking about. So we're on the one minute NASDAQ. And I want to see it come back up to 1506 evens. If you're wondering uh, how I describe the ticks, I will explain that to you now. Evens are an even price level, so 06 evens. I'm not going to say 15,000 every time. That's too much work. So you might hear me say 106 or just 06. Evens is the double zero. Quarters is the, the quarter tick. Halves are the half ticks. And three quarters are the three quarter ticks. So you'll hear me describe things that way. So describing price as a trader would. You're not going to hear me say 15,000 every time. That's way too much work. You will hear me say 108 evens. I'll say the three digits, basically. So what I'm immediately thinking is we come up to 106 evens and reject. And if we do, that's a short idea. Where would I be aiming for a target? I don't know. 89 quarters? No single trade is really more important than the other. Can't get too wedded to a single trade. Not a good policy. You'll take thousands of trades if you're day trading. And does one really matter over the other? No. This is really not a swing traders channel. If you want to see swing trading, it's not this is not the channel for that. This is day trading, trading intraday volatility on a one minute chart. So this is not the swing traders channel. I'm not going to cater to, I don't make any money off this YouTube channel, so I have no reason to cater to swing traders. Sorry. You really want to make the big money in trading, you really got to day trade, is my opinion. You got you to learn how to master intraday volatility. It's not swinging enough. These markets are too controlled. They don't like to move them too far. NASDAQ moves. But I'm not a swing trader. I like trading. I like trading um, intraday volatility. So stick to that. Curling back up to what I'd want to see is 106 evens. I'll probably start listening to some music soon. Don't really want to take this to the long side. The juice is not worth the squeeze in the, to the long side, in my opinion. Um, 102 halves is an inefficient delivered price. I don't know if I'll upload this to YouTube or not. Depends on whether there's any sort of volatility or not. Let's take a look at our daily candle. That's what it looks like. Okay, interested in a short 106 evens, 106 quarters, 106 halves. And many of you are going to have opinions on what I should do with my YouTube channel. I don't really care what you think at all. I really don't care how you trade or what your indicators that you use or your volume profile. Your opinions don't mean anything to me. So it is what it is. They're banging up above me, making noise, stomping. Okay, 106 quarters. Let's see if we get a reaction off that. 106 evens, 106 quarters. They're running upstairs. Don't know where they're running to, but they are running. There is an initial reaction off that 106 evens. Let's see if we push through that.
So right now what I'm experiencing is a growing sense of anxiety. I want to be in the marketplace. So I want to click the button. Uh, that is my very current feeling. However, too early. Not enough price data. So this growing sense of anxiety of wanting to click the button, this is commonplace for me. But uh, if I ever want to get to optimal trading, can't get there. Can't, can't just click the button because you're anxious. Got to wait. Growing sense of pressure in the front of my head. Really wanting to click the button. But I'm trying to become a trained rat rather versus, rather than an untrained rat. So, although I'm feeling a great sense of desire to short this right now, I'm going to let it play out for a couple minutes. My temporal lobes are flaring right now. My anxiety is building. My desire to click the short button is immense. But it's not enough. And I know that if I ever want to make it to big league day, day trading, I cannot succumb to your first impulse. Got to wait. Wait until you feel good about it. 105 evens. One oh six quarters again. Yeah, that's why I didn't click the short button right there. Because it likes to do this, likes to play tricks on you. It's a trickster. It's NASDAQ. Okay. Feeling a little bit better about the short now. Still not quite enough. Still waiting. No button clicking yet. It's kind of like dangling fruit in front of a monkey. Okay, now we're starting to get some displacement. And okay, trade back up in the order block. Now we're starting to feel a little bit better about this. Still just going to wait another 10 seconds. Not going to click it yet. Just waiting. Wait and see how it handles this gap. This gap can be resistance or it can trade through it. It is a key point of interest though. Resettlement gap. Okay. I think we are going to button click now. We are going to button click. Optimal stop loss. I'm going to start with a stop loss. Could trade to this new, new day opening gap. I'm going to say optimal stop loss is there. Okay, above the new day opening gap. Take profit. There's our first one minute liquidity pool. Let's aim for this inefficiency, top of it. It would be six points. Right there. Probably wondering whether one minute liquidity pools are real. Yep, they are. There are people who've already gone long there and their stops are already there. So 
the market works off these inefficiencies and liquidity. Might have clicked that button too fast. Yeah, now we're pushing up into that new day opening gap again, second time. Want to see that act as resistance. Right now I'm feeling sad unclear we are trading up into that new day opening gap they don't usually like to get immediately refilled halfway point of that should be resistance 106 halves Right at about 107 halves, it should find resistance. One oh seven quarters, three quarters. Doesn't find resistance here. We'll have to reevaluate. One oh eight evens. I think we're one tick shy of that new day opening gap right there. Want to see it act as resistance? Want to see it turn lower? See if we fully refilled this here. That low comes in at 108 quarters. So we're one tick off. Could the stop loss be higher? Okay, now we've, there it is, 108 quarters. Came for a full redelivery. Full redelivery there. I was, I missed time that by a few minutes. Missed out on a couple points there, I think. Okay. Came up for that full redelivery, reacted. Good thing about the new day and new week opening gaps is uh, they're very visible. So this will probably that green box will probably stay on my chart for a long time. Price is probably going to want to reference that multiple times. One oh seven, one oh eight three quarters. All right, looks like it does want to trade right back through it. Which is unfortunate. I was off on my timing on that. Okay. Well, I'll give it a minute to reassess. Okay, displacing higher. 
would my next idea be? Turtle soup right above this. Turtle soup right here. Come up and reject. We have liquidity pool here. It's a liquidity pool, red box. Also have one right here. There's our nearest liquidity pool right there. Okay. We're also inefficient right here. So new day opening gap can invert now. And of course my stop loss just could have been suboptimal. It's hard to say. the next trade idea. It's going to be what's the close of that candle? 106 quarters? If we can get that along there. If we get that. Stop loss on that is going to be well I'll wait till if we get filled. It'll be this low. And then target would be red box. So as you can see, so we came up to the new day opening gap, immediate resistance, and then traded through. I thought it would just immediately turn back lower, did not. Got a little inefficiency here that we formed. Gonna try and get along there. One and a half hours to Tokyo opening, just after resettlement. Expecting this to be a very low volatility environment. We've got to scrape out a hard living here. Okay. Coming back through New Day opening gap. Probably going to reference that for a long time. So this is external up here, external down here, internal is going to be here and here. So I don't think during this time of the day it would want external. Probably would want internal though. 115 halves would be an idea. this long. I think the stop might have just been suboptimal. Form a SIBI here. Let's see if we can get that candles the candles low, get short again. So we did get a reaction up here. Get short on the low of that candle. That is uh, one fit one oh nine three quarters. One oh nine three quarters. See if we can get that don't like this long anymore. So we did get that little displacement right there. Stop could be all the way up at external, but I don't know if I want to take that much risk. So probably just be shy of internal. There's a no movement tick right there. There's a tick. No mark to market minute right there. Yeah, this long would not be optimal.
109 three quarters is the cell limit that we want. Historically speaking, at this point, right when it hangs before my sell limit, I'd want to hit the market short. I'm going to try and avoid doing that, waiting to see if I can actually get a mark to market 109 three quarters. See if we can get on the next minute candle. First mark to market was at 109 evens. I want to see if I can get all the way up to the sell limit. And then target would be internal. Yeah, I don't know if I'm getting filled on this. Give it another minute. Give it another minute, minute, minuto. Next minute candle, mark to market is down. Okay. So. See if we can get that. Might just have to hit this at the market. Don't want to. Okay, we're filled short. Internal stop would be here. Don't want internal. A bit external up here. Target, internal, and that's going to be right there. Targeting internal. Wrong time of the day for it to want a whole lot of external. Probably does not. Nine point win wouldn't be bad. Not be bad at all. That's what we're looking for. Next mark to market was up. 108.50. 108.3 quarters.
Well, it would have been filled on the original cell. Should have waited. This time of the day, these market conditions, expecting these inefficiencies to be fully filled, not expecting a lot of breaks into external range liquidity, really only expecting internal. Yeah, this is kind of a hard phenomenon to describe to you, but I will try to do my best. Basically, a displacement lower like this, big displacement lower, like range candle, whatever, and then one tick above that. This this kind of this kind of pattern right here, oftentimes, is going to lead to a down movement. I don't know how to describe it to you. Big displacement down candle, and then a slow grind back up through it. This is often a pattern which leads lower. This pattern here in the yellow box, displacement lower slow grind back up through it and then th this is usually a bearish pattern okay I don't I don't really know how else to describe that to you gonna probably let this recording go two hours coming back to a new day opening gap trade back through it you see the price is re delivering that and rebalancing so you see we had an inefficient price deliver here on resettlement and price came up through it to re deliver it back down through it to rebalance it that is a that is an efficient price delivery now that's how these inefficiencies worked work the algorithm is ironing them out for a fair price a fair price an efficient price that's why it does that so get a resettlement inefficiency it immediately just redelivers and rebalances to offer a fair price that is what it does it does that all day long ergo why you will hear me and watch me trade inefficiencies because that is what it's doing This time of the day, these market conditions, I expect most efficiencies to be redelivered and rebalanced to take us into a holiday weekend. That is what I'm expecting to happen uh, today and Friday. Most inefficiencies to be redelivered, rebalanced. Wick inefficiency here. Wick inefficiency here. Price would need to come down there to redeliver and rebalance those pretty quickly. Unless it just want to, wants to keep working New Day Opening Gap. I just want to keep working it. Maybe. I don't know. I should have let that 109.75's order stay in the marketplace really should have. I uh, mistimed that by two minutes. Not happy with that. Back up in the New Day opening gap, back into that SIBI we just made. The NASDAQ is ironing out all of its inefficiencies right now. Just ironing them out. Making a delivery, an efficient price delivery, fair price would expect it to come basically all the way back up uh, break even and then turn lower again that's kind of what I'm expecting uh, I expect that this move up here this one minute candle should be a retracement should not should not want to go back up to that high that we just made as that price is now efficient so it should want to come lower It's working that new day opening gap a lot. Working that. 
I would expect that the up candle that we just had there uh, was just a retracement. That would be my ex expectation. There's a three minute swing right there. Just formed. So the price just closed right at that 50% point of that uh, new day opening gap. That's equilibrium. That is equilibrium of that new day opening gap right there. Just got to close at it. Now I'd like to see it close below it for lower. Close below equilibrium, meaning means that we're pushing in a discount relative to that new day opening gap. Good close there, close back in a discount. My profit target is at internal range liquidity. External would be the wick lower. Don't want to aim for external at this time of the day. Don't think that that would be an optimal exit. Don't think it's optimal to take my stop to break even yet, as it could come back to iron out a volume imbalance that you can see there. It's visible. It's one tick. It is visible. Uh, would not expect it, you know, I would expect that it's possible for that to come right back up to that volume imbalance, basically put me break even and then go back down. I are really screaming children outside and I'm a little bit autistic, so I hate it. I hate it with a fiery passion, noises, loud, loud, loud children and gaggles of women cackle that start cackling old women start cackling. You're at a restaurant, get a table of a bunch of like middle-aged, senior-aged women. They start cackling. I hate it. I like the silence. Really enjoy the silence. Unless I'm listening to trance music, which is pretty loud, but it's rhythmic, so I like it. 106 evens, 106 quarters. Coming back, just working that new day opening gap. It's working it. Delivering a fair price. An efficient price. Yeah, I'll probably let this recording go hour and a half, two hours, take a break before the uh, Tokyo Open, then maybe play Tokyo, maybe play London tonight. Some point have to sleep. Did go for a long walk. Okay. Got some uh, internal now. This swing point right here is going to be internal just below that. I expect our second internal to be the target. Externals down here below 199 uh, evens. I'm aiming for 100 halves. 100 halves would be that internal. Probably wondering, are there actually stop orders at all these places? And yes, there are. Believe me, there are. They're there. They're already planned. At all times when these markets are moving, there are stop orders in the market. The trading algorithms, the algorithm will be seeking that liquidity at all times. It does that. It irons out inefficiencies and it seeks liquidity at all times. That is what it does. No exceptions. So, you're probably wondering, is there really liquidity at this time of the day already with just this price action? Yeah, there are already people long that have their stops down here and here already. Believe me, they're there. They are there. Go to your book map. You'd see it. It's there. So every time that we make these little three-minute swings, somebody just went long there and put a stop right there. Guarantee that's, um, that's without a doubt in my mind. There are already, there's already, after five minutes, there are stops at 103 halves. Ergo, 
I mean, there are already people who got long on that right there. That candle, people got long on that. You think it's small? It is small. But I guarantee you, there's trading algorithms and there's manual traders that are holding long with stop losses right below this, so right at 103.75. Why is that internal range liquidity? You might be wondering. You think I'm a crazy person? I understand. I am. Internal range liquidity relative to this swing. Okay, so we have a swing point here from low to high. Internal range liquidity is any swing points that we have in between low to high. That's internal. So it's relative to the swing that you're looking at. Okay, why do I say that my exit is at internal? What does that mean? Well, this low here at 109, 10, 100 halves, 100 halves, that low is internal relative to that swing. Therefore, it is internal. You ever hear me say internal, external? That's what that means. So it's all scalable, it's all modu modular. So, let's talk about premium discount. Let's make this um, blue. Maybe that'd be easier to see. No, blue is harder to see. Let's do purple. Uh, okay, purple. We'll try purple. Maybe red is easier to see. I don't know. We'll do red. Okay. Um, it's all modular. So, every swing you're looking at, right? Premium and discount is relative to that dealing range or that range. I would just call it a swing. Could also call it dealing range. That's what Michael Huddleston calls it. And that's if Michael calls it that, I'm okay with dealing range. You can see that we've got multiple dealing ranges, right? Take this dealing range. That's a dealing range right there. We are in discount relative to that. But since resettlement, you can see that we are in discount, premium discount. We're currently working in a discount relative to our swing that we just formed. And how many points is that? 099 evens. It's like a 12 point swing. 12 point dealing range. So what is internal range liquidity? This swing point right here from 100 halves down to 99 evens. Between those two price points, right? Yellow box, that is internal range liquidity. Are there really traders that have stops in the yellow box? Yep, they're there. They are there. Not a figment of my imagination. There are stops in the yellow box. Now, are there also stops down below? Yes, there are. But when we're day trading, especially if we're day trading at certain times of the day, you can't be betting on external. Much safer bet to bet on internal. Am I going to pull this manually? No. Not yet. We're forming another swing here. And I might take a break for thirty minutes, get back on the get back on the horse later. Okay, this is gonna be another swing. The market is generating generating liquidity right now. There are gonna be people going along on this hitting the market long. You think they're not? They are. They're getting long right on that candle right there. So their stops are going to be where? Where my buy limit is and lower. Would expect another push down. One push, two push. I like three pushes. So we're, we're, when we're counting our pushes, I like three and four and five, but preferably three. Three is kind of that magic number. It will sometimes do more. Sometimes you'll get three push, four push, five push. I prefer three push. So we just had a swing point there. Might work all the way back up, basically to my break even. It's possible. I don't want to pull this manually. I think that would be... Um, faulty suboptimal if I just covered right here for this for this gain I think that would be suboptimal as there is price structure between the current mark to market price and my position so I do think it would be suboptimal for me to cover this right now
mark to market in that gap. Redelivering and rebalancing that, working on that little one tick gap. The algorithm is curling back up and rebalancing that price, offering a fair price, an efficient price. Should find resistance right here to get an initial reaction. So sometimes you're going to see me upload live live trading uh, sessions that are going to be moving very quickly. There's going to be a lot of action. Sometimes you're going to see this nine point range. New day opening gap coming right back up to it. Hmm. Come back up to the new day opening gap again. Still think this would be suboptimal for me to pull this short at this point. What I will do is I don't really want to take a loss on this trade. Um, so I'll put the stop one tick in profit. And this, so that'll be a scratch. Might have missed the target. New day opening gap. Let's see if it wants to use that as resistance. Yeah, I really thought that to pull, I thought pulling my profit there was suboptimal as price. Did not make it to even internal range liquidity before coming back up. So, do I want to go ahead and pull this? Yeah. I'm not going to pull it just yet. I'm going to wait it out, wait and see. Use the wait and see approach here. Didn't really want to see it come back up the new day opening gap. But I want to learn to train to, you know, let it play out. Something that I have not been optimized. Guess my exit here was suboptimal. Guess the exit should have been at that rejection bot. probably going to stop me out and then I'll have to get short again is the most likely scenario Came right back up to new day opening gap. Okay, at this point we have a swing point here. Same for that. And then probably break time if we, uh, that'd be about an hour long recording or so.
if we can get it. Nine minutes to the top of the hour. I will be trading Tokyo. I will probably be trading London. And I will be trading tomorrow. I will be trading if the market is open as I have to. Got to make it happen. So. Market conditions change. Swings change. And the take profit went up because that is our first internal range liquidity there. Could push through that. I do like to see close below the day open a gap. That's good. That's good. Yeah, very good. Es gefällt mir. Es gefällt mir sehr. Biegen Sie rechts ab. Okay. Um, good close there. You're going to watch me live trade the New York session where the NASDAQ is actually moving. That'll be more exciting to you in terms of viewer content. But in the market conditions, if you're actually trying to learn from me, for whatever value that I can provide to you. You will want to watch these slow sessions as well because it gives me an opportunity to talk more. So, spell things out more. So it kind of depends on which part of that viewing audience you are. You just want to watch me lose a bunch of money or you want to um, you know, listen to me speak about the market. So every time that a trade happens, it's called a mark to market. Uh, in the United States, there's something called the mark to market election, if you're a day trader. Uh, and it means that you can write off your losses as ordinary income. Couldn't really do that with these prop firms as you're just paid out as a 1099, but if you were trading your own personal account, you could do that. Mark to market election, ordinary losses on your trading losses. I'm a licensed attorney, uh, so, but probably not in your state or wherever you live. But I did take income tax class, so I'm telling you the truth. Okay, I guess this is gonna scratch. I guess. Uh, what did I miss here? Didn't even want to come down to internal. Just came down to. Uh, this rejection block here, one tick above that, two ticks above rejection block before we get a deep retracement. I think my break even stop here is suboptimal as it is in uh, in inefficiency. So I've got to move the stop. Um, internal that is there, external is there. It's I'm not moving the stop out of revenge. I'm, I'm moving it because this is a volume imbalance. That's an inefficiency. Okay and the market could easily turn back lower on that. So I'm not revenge moving the stop. I'm moving the stop because that's external range liquidity and if we're working in a dealing range then it shouldn't get up there. There's no revenge here. I'm not moving the stop out of revenge. New day opening gap, closing around the equilibrium of that. It wants to really explore that new day opening gap. So you can see we re-delivered new day opening gap, rebalanced new day opening gap, coming back to re-re-deliver the new day opening gap, so reclaim the new day opening gap, and then probably move lower. Okay, mark to market is lower. That was good. That was a good mark to market. Ever want me to talk about law school? If you're interested in law school and what that was like, I, mean, I didn't go to an Ivy League or anything. Uh, wouldn't recommend it. Really wouldn't recommend being an attorney. 
but that is my opinion. I probably have to be one now because I need the money. <laughs> but we're going to uh, live off nothing for a while. And if I can uh, make this happen, we'll see. Need to get need to get this account funded. If not, we're going back to writing briefs. I'd rather not do that. If you are in the state of Texas and you need some quick legal advice, uh, I'll whore myself out to you. 200 bucks. If you're not in the state of Texas, uh, I cannot advise you. But if you are, I can represent you if you need it. I don't want to. But if you've got some legal questions in this state, I can help you. This is what I want to do with my life, as boring as it looks right now. That $100 right there that you see on that screen, that's about half the day I was making. And, and the only reason I'm letting that go further right now is just because it's not real. There were, you know, the, the numbers, I'll just tell you, with day trading and being an attorney, you make a lot more money day trading. Unless you're like a senior attorney, you're a partner, you have your own law firm, you're doing well, you're in a, uh, an urban, you know, you're in Dallas, Austin, Houston. They do pretty well. Uh, but your associate attorneys are, you're just a bitch. Uh, and it sucks. Uh, it sucks a lot. The clients suck. Your supervising attorneys generally suck. The paralegals suck. Really, the clients definitely suck. So, if I have to do it, I will. Do I want to do it? No. And if this were my own cash right now and you saw that $110 and this were my own money, oh yeah, I'd be pulling that right now. $110 in an hour? Fine with that. But uh, it's not and it's not and it's not. And there's commissions to pay. If you pull it, you're paying commission slippage. So the exit is not really that $70. It'd be like 50 it would be more like 50 right now. After all the commissions and the slippage, you see 80. If I exited at the market right now, that'd be about 60. Okay, it's still respecting new day opening gap. Top of the hour, one hour to the Tokyo Open. If I can get this trade to play out, come to my pro take profit, I'll stop this recording and then get back up on it for the Asian session. If you're wondering what New Day Opening Gap is, pretty self explanatory. It is the inefficiency created from resettlement, the one hour futures resettlement every day. It's a new day opening gap. It's not always there. It's not always this prominent. I think we had like a you know, pretty decent sized new day opening gap. New week opening gap is another resettlement gap. They all act the same. It's gonna be a draw on liquidity. It's gonna be support and resistance, also inverted support and resistance, so dynamic support and resistance. If you're interested in your son or daughter being an attorney, your son or daughter better really want it because it really sucks. Uh, clients, you know, clients don't really see how much work goes into it. They just see the bill. Divorces suck a lot. Uh, okay. Associate attorney, your associate bitch. So, would I rather be a slave to my screen than a slave to my supervising attorney? Yes. By a long shot. Not even close. 
Not even close. Not that I'm trying to turn these trading sessions into like little podcasts of me just bloviating. But when the market's not moving, it's not moving. And this is the period one hour after resettlement. Virtually no movement. Wouldn't expect any. We do expect it to pick up in about 30 minutes. I might pull this, call the recording. I don't know. Another mark to market with nothing. So if you're wondering like, if the things that I'm saying are real or not, I mean, look at the mark to markets right at the 50%, right? That can't be random. It's not random. All right. Well, I didn't want to see this, obviously. We're coming up into internal range liquidity. And the new stop, or the new take profit's got to go right there. It's our latest swing. Evolving targets. Trying to take the low-hanging fruit, but the low-hanging fruit changes. You can see why I moved my stop. It's not random. So I'll probably call this video resettlement to Asia. Next video, Asia. So I think it goes without saying that my first target was suboptimal. Didn't quite get there. Looking for a very first swing point here. Lowest hanging fruit for this trade. Trade did not exactly play out the manner in which I wanted the first time. So the trade evolved. Work on that new day opening gap. Made another swing point there. And at this point, we're probably looking at taking out internal here. Internal right there. And this trade is going to come up to the swing point that we just made. Price is always drawing to inefficiency and liquidity. Prefer to enter in on an inefficiency, exit on a liquidity target. It's a basic formula. So. really just working that new day opening gap. All right, coming up into internal range liquidity here. There it is, internal was hit. Didn't quite make it to external. My stop is at external. All right, we're stopped out. So what is the next trade idea? Turtle soup that. Don't think we break these highs. Wrong time of the day to do that. So, I think we just get above turtle soup these highs right here. Get into this liquidity right here. Turtle soup it. Would be my thinking. 
stop for turtle soup should be, oh, well, I don't know. We'll do a standard deviation projection of this swing. Start there and work it lower. So, you can see it's been working New Day opening gap. I missed my first couple of uh, trades. I want to see, came up to this liquidity. Could turtle soup that? I'm thinking, what's the turtle soup the next? I'm going to go ahead and step away for a moment. Be back. Uh, it looks like it wants to turtle soup the very first liquidity, huh? All right, try again here. And the stop will go above external. Uh, I'll put it up here, see how it develops. So, entry is at order block in formation. Really don't want to hit the market on this. I'd like to see my order get filled in this minute. No. Maybe. Potentially. 
Looks like it does just want to turtle soup this. Gonna wait three more minutes before pulling this trade idea, calling it. I do not want to enter at the market because I believe that would be hasty. Uh, it's coming back to new day opening gap. Maybe this Bissy. Yeah, first Bissy. Bounce the first Bissy. Earlier, I was about four minutes off my timing. Using that as a theme, I want to wait. On this one, see if I can not be four minutes early. So I'm going to wait. See if we get back up to this order block. Shorted at the order block. Turtle soup this high. So really, whenever you're kind of looking at the diagram of a swing, the first trade entry is the turtle soup entry. And it's difficult to be on the turtle soup entry. Possible, difficult. The next entry is like the first order block. Then it's down to the inefficiencies. They kind of all play like that. That's how they play. So the second entry idea here, if it's not the turtle soup above this liquidity, which that was the first in this, whatever the swing this is making, whatever swing terminus this is going to be, the second entry would be the order block and that's where my obviously I'm trying to get filled so the first entry in whatever little swing that this swing down is that would be the turtle soup entry that's your first entry in the in the process in the in the schematic of a swing and sometimes that'll be the only entry it gives you You know, your third and fourth entries are the inefficiencies. But I'm going to let this play out for a minute. Mark to market is lower. It's very unfortunate. Okay. This is probably a swing I'm going to miss. Back to New Day opening gap. Pull this. Okay. Historically speaking, I'm a you know a few minutes early, so I could still come back and fill me. Back to new day opening gap. This idea is, is invalid. Pull that halfway, midway point here of New Day opening gap. Midway point. Let's see if it finds support there. This could be a long at the market. I'm 
longer wait. Okay. It's going to be long at the market. And I say the stop is going to be there. And if this is a retracement of this swing, it should make it back up to order block. Do one tick above that. Okay, sell to limit. So if our next move is a retracement of this swing that we just made, then it should come back up to order block. Found support there on the 50% of that new day opening gap. It's a reclaimed new, new day opening gap now. I want to see if it uses it to invert, go higher. If the next swing is a retracement of the swing that we just had down, then target would be order block. diagram of a swing starts with a turtle soup and usually then an order block a couple of retracements on the way and then down the liquidity kind of the basic diagram you see with almost all these swings it's turtle soup a couple weak inefficiencies order block displacement displacement then retracement back up to order block and then once it's at order block then lower to liquidity kind of like the basic framework of a swing so I'm just gonna take profit at order block I can get it so you see that it is inverting right now new day opening gap I want to see it come back up to order block should be an accurate assessment of where price wants to go Um, if I if I just keep trading through Asia, I'll probably stop this recording and go resettlement to Asia. Next recording would be Asia. Okay. So the basic right every time that you have a swing, usually it'll start with turtle soup, and then order block retracement, and then down to liquidity. Kind of the basic outline: turtle soup. Displacement, order block, retracement to order block, swing to liquidity. Perfect? No. Kind of the basic diagram of a swing, though. Basic outline. So, I'd like to see it make it back up to order block. What is a reclaimed order block? It's an order block that has been traded to twice or more. Reclaimed order block. All of these patterns can be reclaimed, meaning that they, you know, it gets traded back to it twice or more. One minute balance price range there, trading in the midway point of that. Reclaimed wick. Same thing as all the rest. Reclaimed twice or more. 
So what is the balance price range? Kind of basically looks like a V. Did find support there in the 50% of that new week, new day opening gap. Wick and efficiency here as well. Could find support on that. Want to see it go back up to order block. back into new day opening gap. So that is a reclaimed new day opening gap multiple times really. See what our next mark to market is. It's down. This should find support right here on this wick inefficiency and then back up to order block. Should be, should be an accurate assessment of what it wants to do. You see the wick inefficiency here, halfway point of that should. Um, Find support on that, back up to order block. I'm thinking my take profit one tick short of order block. At that point it might be a short. Let's see. Kind of all your presuppositions about the market, all of the truisms, buy low, sell high, all any anything that you can think of, pretty much all nonsense. You gotta have to throw that away if you wanna be accurate because it's just computerized algorithms. And they work off a time schedule kind of do the same things over and over again. Okay. Coming back into this uh, little gap we just made. So had a mark to market that was lower. 109 should find support or even 109 quarters and then back up to order block. Yes, sir. It should go back up the order block. It's the current thinking. How many sessions are there in a day? Kind of depends on how you slice it. Asia, London, New York, it's a basic framework, three sessions. You can break those down further. Asia AM, Asia PM, London AM, London PM, which runs into New York, obviously. Then New York AM, New York PM, New York lunch, 
and then resettlement to Asia and really Asia to Lund Asia to midnight resettlement as well there's that So right now we are resettlement to Asia, coming into Asia. Asia starts in 33 minutes. What is Asia? Tokyo and Sydney, Australia. Okay, coming back up to order block. And those obviously inverted wick inefficiencies are there as well. Well, haven't had a mark to market in a while. Oh, there's the next one. Oh, that was unfortunate. All right. Guess I didn't want to make it all the way back up to order block. That's commissions. Okay, this is resettlement to Asia.